What's up guys, it's Josh here from Keep It Techie. So check this out. MIT just dropped a report that says 95% of company AI projects are failing. Yeah, 95%. That's basically every project except a handful of success stories. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, isn't AI supposed to be the future? The thing that's going to save businesses billions and put half of us out of work and turn the rest of us into prompt engineers? Well, not exactly. And today I want to unpack why most of these flashy enterprise AI pilots don't get off the ground and why the hype doesn't match the reality and what it means for regular people like you and me who actually use this tech. Now, before we go further, do me a quick favor. If you enjoy thought provoking tech content, don't hit that like button so more folks can see it. It really helps channel out. All right, let's talk about why all these corporate AI dreams keep crashing. Let's get it. So MIT's research looked at hundreds of deployments interviews with leaders, surveys of employees, the whole nine. And the number that jumped out, only 5% of projects led to rapid revenue growth. The rest either flatlined or gave such a small impact, you could barely measure it. And here's the kicker. The problem isn't really the AI models. The models are fine. The problem is how humans are trying to use them. And the crazy part about it is companies are pouring billions into AI, but the workflow mismatch is killing them. Tools like ChatGPT work great for an individual typing in questions, but when you're trying to bolt them into a giant company with approvals, policies, compliance, and 20 different legacy systems, it's like trying to swap out your Core's engine with a lawnmower motor. Sure, it fits, but good luck driving it down the highway. And this has people asking, are we in a AI bubble? Honestly, it feels a lot like .com 2.0. Investors and executives want AI to be the next rush, but instead of moving fast and break things, it's more like moving fast and break budgets. I mean, some companies are even mandating AI days, like literally Mondays are for AI only. Imagine working for a company that says, yeah, no customer calls today, no budget, just AI experiments. I mean, that's actually happening. And one CEO replaced 80% of his staff trying to bet on AI. Sounds bold, right? Except most companies that try this aren't seeing those same profit margins. So you get this weird situation, a handful of startups, sometimes literally teenagers are scaling to millions because they pick one problem, solve it well, and partner smartly. Meanwhile, these giant enterprises spend months writing strategic decks and burn millions on pilots and nothing comes out of it. Now let's make this relatable. Have you ever bought a treadmill, use it for a week, and then it turned into a $900 clothing rack? That's enterprise AI right now. Here's what's really happening. For one, there is no memory. Most tools don't actually learn from your corrections. Imagine teaching someone the same lesson every single day. And that's how a lot of these pilots feel. And a lot of times there's terrible integration. Employees have to copy paste between systems. If you've ever had to fill out the same form on three different websites, you know that pain, especially when you're applying for jobs and stuff like that. Now, AI is stuck in a central lab with data scientists. The people who actually do the job, line managers, admins, never get the power to shape it. So in my opinion, that's the wrong ownership of the actual AI itself. And that's kind of like when I worked as a senior financial systems analyst for a company where I managed their financial data. Now, I didn't know anything about finance. So I had to work closely with the people on the ground level that were doing all the accounting within the organization. And that's where the disconnect lies because the people that actually do the jobs that they're trying to replace with AI are not involved in the process. And one thing executives are doing, they're measuring the wrong thing. I mean, they love looking at those time save metrics. And I know that because I used to create some of those reports in the past for organizations I work for. But the CFO only cares about real KPIs like revenue, cost per ticket, or time to close. No KPI equals no funding equals pilot death. So it's not an AI problem, it's a human process problem, which I think a lot of these companies didn't take into account 
when they tried to implement a lot of these programs. Now here's the irony. The report found that bigger return on investment wasn't in sales or marketing. Where most companies blow their AI budget, it's in the back office. So that means finance, admin, customer support, you know, the boring stuff, things like invoice matching, contract review, or knowledge search, which is not that glamorous, but huge savings when done correctly. Think about it, cutting an outsourced call center bill in half with automation, that's actually money saved. Also replacing some manual finance tasks with let's say a bot that never sleeps, that's serious money. But instead of focusing here, most companies chase shiny sales demos. Now here's another piece. MIT found companies that buy solutions from specialized vendors succeed about twice as often as those that build everything in-house. Translation, a lot of companies are trying to reinvent the wheel and what they usually end up building is a worse wheel. Slower, buggier, more expensive. But here's where I'll throw my Linux loving two cents in. Building can make sense if you keep it focused. If you're solving one internal workflow, you've got some Linux servers, open source tools, and people who know how to experiment, sure, build your own. But if you're a bank or an insurance company trying to cook up your own version of ChatGPT, maybe stick to buying it. Now, something the headlines miss, and that's the workforce impact. No AI hasn't led to a wave of layoffs across the board. What's actually happening is companies just aren't backfilling jobs as people leave. So customer support, admin roles, outsourcing, those are shrinking quietly. And then there's shadow AI, employees just using ChatGPT on the side because their company's official tools are too clunky. If you've ever snuck your own app onto your company's laptop because IT took too long to approve it, you probably get the picture. That's shadow AI. Now, MIT also hinted at what's coming and that's agentic AI. That's the next step. AI that can not only answer, but also act, remember, and improve over time within guardrails. So imagine a team of little software agents, one for triage, one for research, one for approval. This is where things could finally click for enterprises, but only if they get the basics right first. Otherwise, it's just going to be a new flavor of failed pilot. So what does this all mean for us? Well, I've done a couple videos talking about don't buy the hype, the AI hype train. Just because companies are failing doesn't mean AI is useless. It means execution matters. Also start small. If you're curious, don't try to AI your entire life. Pick one boring workflow, like summarizing notes, managing files, automating reminders, nail that, and then expand, which is something I've been experimenting with in a N which I did a video on a couple weeks ago. Now, one other thing is the Linux advantage. I mean, self-hosting and open source gives regular folks a chance to experiment at low cost, which is why I definitely recommend everybody create them a home lab. Just use one of your old computers or something, build you a little lab and you can even run AI right at the house. And you don't need a billion dollar pilot to see value. Now also ask the horror questions. Every shiny AI demo should answer, what's the measurable impact? If it can't, it's all hype. So here's my question to you all. What's the biggest AI fail you've seen so far? I mean, drop it down in the comments. I want to hear the funniest or most frustrating ones. I've been doing a lot of reading on Reddit and I've run across a bunch of stories. I would love to hear some of them here, but maybe you tried an AI tool that promised to write your emails, but ended up writing gibberish, or maybe your company dropped thousands on a pilot that went nowhere. Let's compare some notes. And if you found this breakdown helpful, go on and hit that like button, subscribe for more thought provoking Linux and tech content, and share this video with somebody in your circle who's still convinced AI is a silver bullet. But anyway, I'm Josh here from Keep It Techie. My goal here is to simply help you understand tech, Linux, and the future of work without the hype. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And remember, technology doesn't solve problems. People solve problems using technology. So keep experimenting, keep questioning, and as always, keep it techie.
Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech. Bye.